Well, well, we have quite a crowd here, so maybe I should start by counting how many of us here, how many people is there here. So I need to count from there. One, two, three, four. Oh, very quickly, I got 638. Exactly. <laughs> I can't secretly when I was sitting listening to, co to, to talks. But I would like to count again. How many living organisms, living things, life forms, are there here listen, listening to me, listening to my talk, a TEDx talk? So I need to count again. One, two, three, four, five, five, five. Wow. Quickly, you see how many I got? Life forms? Hundreds of trillions. Actually, I, I didn't think about myself as so popular. <laughs> but, but that's true, because what we have here are microorganisms, tiny creatures, or just microbes or bugs. So they're everywhere. So you, 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 you say, no, there's nothing surprising. So it's, microorganisms should be everywhere. They're in the, in the streams. Uh, in the dirt, in the soil, on animals, in animals, on the plants, and so on. So they're everywhere. But uh, when we look at microsomes, bugs, microbes, uh, on the things that we use daily, well, maybe uh, let's start with something that you think might be very dirty, the toilet. So you see, this is from one study. So they just swap and count and, and try to estimate the number of microsomes on different things. You see, the toilet is actually the cleanest here. <laughs> oh my god. But come and think about it. You clean your toilets every day, or maybe your domestic helpers clean it uh, in the morning and also in the afternoon. But then, you know, what's the most dirty one here? It's your smartphone. And you're taking pictures with it. You have 25,000 square inch here. Bugs, microbes. Okay, so stop playing with your phone now and listen to me. <laughs> well, a lot of the uh, microbes that we think about, we think about them as pathogens. And that's very true. Actually, a lot of them are pathogens. So they attack you, they make you sick, they make you vomit, they cause diarrhea. So they can be pathogens. These are the pathogens. But sometimes some of them actually are good bugs. So uh, in fact, most of the bugs, a lot of the bugs are good bugs. But uh, mind you that bugs are not born to be good or bad. They just behave as, the, as themselves, all right? But also sometimes a good bug can be bad. When your conditions is not so well, then uh, a good bug may make you sick. So when news like that, lunch boxes with a lot of toxins produced by bugs, uh, excess bacteria in the lunch boxes, and so on. You know, these are the bad bugs doing their jobs. But foods like this, the latto, one of the most important protein source for Japanese for a long, long time. Actually, this is a bowl of bacterial culture. So you culture bacteria with the soybean, and the bacteria pre-digest the, the lentil, the soybean, and then produce a easier to digest food. And they also get rid of the inhibitor that you digest the, the soybean without being affected by the inhibitor. Well, that's me. <laughs> well, a, a better version of me, a simulated me. And you see, I'm not shedding dust and shedding microorganisms, bugs, microbes. So you say, wow, I don't see you shedding all your bacteria, but mind you, microorganisms, microbes, bugs are small, tiny, and microscopic. We cannot really see them with our eyes. So we have a lot of bugs on us, and you're shedding your bugs, and you you, you will not know that you're so connected with the, the one sitting beside you because your bugs is going to them, but you're receiving the bugs also. 
So what I'm actually trying to point there is that we have bugs, we have microsomes on us but also in us. And uh, in the last 10 years or so, we know a lot about these bacteria, viruses, fungi on us and also in us. So you see, these are cover stories of scientific journal, lecture, but that is not so important. But uh, when these bugs get onto the cover of the economist, then you know they are really real and important. Scientific American have a cover story of your inner ecosystem. So the inner systems, ecosystems, the bugs in you. And so that makes us ask, whether we are really just human. Of course, we like to think that we are the golden boy, okay? But we are, are we 100% human? Well, the answer is no. So not only that, we have microbes on us, bugs in us, but also they are outnumber us. So we have about a trillion cells in our body, in each one of us, a trillion human cells. But we have 10 trillion bugs in us or on us. So we are actually, when I look at you, look at yourself, you think that, well, I'm just a human. But actually, I'm looking at you as a walking superhuman carrying an ecosystem, 10 trillion cells of bacteria, of virus, and viruses, and fungi walking around and then shedding them. The reason why we can really understand the complexity of the microbes these days is that the cost of sequencing DNA has dropped quite a bit, or oh, actually very drastically. So the blue lines, the cost dropping of the uh, computer, that's, that's why we have maybe 50 years ago, the power of the smartphone that you have would take a whole building of computer, but now it's all in your hands. Of course, they are dirty. <laughs> the computer in those days are much cleaner. But anyway, the, the cost dropped very much, dropped very much. Now we can really sequence and know about the, the microorganisms. And they're not only around, but they're associating with us very closely. They don't, they don't leave so easily. So they're there all over us. Actually, no matter where you look at your brain, well, of course, you would think your brain is clean, even though with some dirty thoughts. But, uh, <laughs> But actually, they're still clean, but they're clean with many, many, many bugs. There are bacteria in your brain, there are bacteria in your blood, there are bacteria in your liver. Wherever you, find, you look, then you, you can find them. So uh, now we can reveal the bacteria, because for those that we could not culture, we can still look at the DNA, and then now we start to understand them. And that's a human body. And if I ask you which part of your body that you think that's in closest contact with the environment, you would think, well, maybe it's my hand, or maybe my face, or maybe uh, when I walk around, I just, well, of course we have shoes, but when we walk around, we'll get in touch with the environment. Breathing, that's breathing, pollens, and so on. But I tell you, it's not all these but rather that's the tube within yourself. You have a very long tube, very much twisted. The tube of your gastro uh, gastrointestinal tract, your gut. Starting with your mouth, going through it, and then turn and turn and turn and turn, and then go out of the other end. <laughs> and uh, what you have there, what you have there are really a lot of bugs. Starting from your mouth and then go to your stomach, there's quite a few bugs, not too many. But then you go all the way down to the colon, actually you have so many bugs, so many that if they become human, then we, we need to have a thousand Earths to host them. So we have about 10 to 9 to 10 to 12 uh, bugs in your colon. So many of them. Well, but they're not, they're just as Passengers, they're not there just to live, but they are taking part of our health and disease. So the 10 trillions of microorganisms in our gut, 
and actually on every part of our body, but the most are in our gut. They are responsible, they are connected, and they can help us to develop our neural systems, to help us to have immune responses. You see, we, we keep on feeding all these foreign materials, materials from the environment into the gut, a lot more than the dust, the soil, or the pollen. We feed in a lot of food, so we keep feeding them. And these foods will need to be monitored. And these foods are also foods for the bugs. So we need to control them. We need to respond to them. So that comes the immune system. We have to develop our immune system. And the bugs help us to develop our immune systems and, and help us to monitor the envi environmental impact. And there are also barriers to diseases and the regular things like the, they help us to digest food and make vitamins. So when the bugs are not happy, or they just change their composition, change their profile, then we have a lot of problems. And those are the kind of problems that we see quite often today. The metabolic diseases, obesity, uh, diabetes, and also the immune diseases, allergies, autoimmune diseases and, and all this, because we are, not feeding, we are not feeding them right. We give them too much sugar. We give them too much fat. We disturb the compositions. And when they're disturbed, it seems like they're fighting back, but actually they're not. They just try to live happily. Well, we need to happily together. If they only, the bugs are happy, and we are not happy, then that's too bad. So the bugs would develop from the baby onwards. And I'd like to tell you very briefly that uh, for a baby to, to develop the, the uh, microorganisms in their gut, they need to take that in from the mother. And the best way to take the bugs from the mother is through lateral birth. So going through the uh, birth canal, not C-sections. And then when the baby grows, then the child needs to take in solid food, but before that, they have to rely on the mother's milk or the formula. So for mother's milk, there are about 300 different kinds of bugs. For the formula, for the best brand we have, maybe we have two. For the rest, none. So uh, there's a very important inoculation of the bugs from mother's milk. And also they have oligosaccharides, polysaccharides, from the mother's meal that actually are the foods for the bugs, not the foods for the baby. So they develop the bugs up to about three years old. That's almost fully developed. And that profile, that composition, will be carried on for the rest of our lives. So starting from the child, three years old until 80 years old. Three years old determines what you can get at 80 years old. It's a Chinese saying about that. But when you treat the child, actually child get infections all the time and uh, very easily get infected, especially when they go to school or nursery schools. And if you give the child antibiotics, then that would be too bad. That will affect, dis disrupt the profiles. So I'd like to tell you one experiment. This experiment is using mice. Those are germ-free mice. That means they were raised without any contact with any bugs. And uh, they are germ-free. They don't have any bugs. So uh, the, the way the experiment goes by feeding the mice with the feces, the stools of the fat mice and the lean mice. And then what you get from the fat mice, you have fat, obese mice from the obese bugs. And then you have lean mice from the lean donor. And that has been repeated with human stools. From a fat twin brother, you get fat mice. And from, from the uh, lean twin brother, you get lean mice. So what we propose to do is to check your profile, check your gut microbiome profile, and then design diet plans. And, uh, with that, we hope to help people to maintain their health 
to help people to lose their weight, to help people to deal with their chronic diseases. So uh, healthy gut microbiomes give you healthy gut, and then you become a healthy person. So let me finish by saying that treat your gut microbiome microbes well, and you will feel swell. Thank you. <laughs>